Hello, hello everyone. It's Connell Finlay here, the owner and director of The Seller Store down in New Zealand. And welcome to today's episode of The Seller TV. So today we're going to be trying quite an interesting red wine. And it's from Domaine Philippe Verre. And here's a little close up there for you. And this is their Cuvée Renaissance. And so it's, this is quite an interesting producer. And you can see around the top of the uh, bottle here, it says Terre de Cosmoculture. And so basically, Cosmoculture is something that Philip Verre, or the Domaine Verre, they're sort of all together, they've created. And it's this whole new way of looking at and thinking about um, viticulture and winemaking, for that matter. Uh, many of you have probably heard of the whole natural wine movement. Basically, what I'm trying to say here is Vire has taken, because it usually goes organic and then biodynamic, um, and then people become natural wines, um, generally speaking. Not every organic wine is a natural wine, not every biodynamic wine is a natural wine, and vice versa. Um, but pretty much every single uh, natural wine is going to be either organic and, and or uh, biodynamic. Now, his wines are natural wines. He doesn't boast about them being natural wines. Uh, he doesn't necessarily even boast about them being organic or biodynamic either. Um, in fact, he's got a very, very small output of wines that he makes. Uh, but what he does have is cosmoculture, so it's sort of heightened uh, biodynamics. A little bit crazy, a little bit um, and all the rest, but it's good. It's great. And he's all about making the most purest and sort of... Yeah, most purest sort of product that he possibly can, and making the most true product that he possibly can as well. Uh, generally speaking, all of his wines are red, uh, apart from only a couple of white wines. He makes quite a few uh, sorts of wines, all very, very small batches of, the, of every single one of them. Um, and this one is his Renaissance, as I said before. And this is effectively a GSM, uh, so it's a Grenache, Syrah, Mavidra, um sort of blend. And it has got a little bit of Carignan in there as well, just a tiny amount. And so this, he is actually based in the Southern Rhone Valley, like right on the very, very uh, end of the Southern Rhone Valley, sort of closer to the south of France. Uh, what, but what is quite interesting is that he doesn't necessarily always uh, blend or pick at the right time and all the rest that uh, the rest of the south of Rhone, uh, Southern Rhone uh, picks at. And because there are all these hardcore legislative things and hardcore rules um, that are all to do with the AOC system uh, or the sort of regional system that uh, is in place in France, uh, where the, everyone has to sort of pick at a certain time, use certain grapes and all the rest, uh, Domain Very doesn't necessarily do those things or follow those rules. And because of that, he can't actually say where his wines are from. So he can't say that he's actually from the... Uh, the Southern Rhone Valley, um, and so he actually has to be called a Vin de France. And so usually Vin de France is uh, something that we would sort of say is not a good wine. You know, it's the bottom of the bottom. Uh, generally speaking, you have sort of Vin de France, you have Vin de Tarbe, uh, table wine, which is slightly better quality than Vin de France, and then you have sort of AAC, AOC wines, basically wines that follow the strict legislative rules, and then because of that, then they're very good quality. And yes, generally speaking, they are. But because he doesn't follow the rules doesn't mean he doesn't make good quality wine. Uh, and so, anyway, that's the thing. So he does come from the Southern Rhone. We've been there. We know this. Uh, and But he does not follow the rules of the Southern Rhone or any of the France, really. Uh, and this is also shown in his Terre de Cosmoculture sort of ideals. Um, anyway, so that's all sort of by the by. But this is his Renaissance, as I said, so it's Grenache heavy, uh, a little bit of Syrah, a little bit of Mavidra, uh, a little bit of Carignan, um, and there might even be a little bit of Cinso in this particular vintage as well. So anyway, let's give it a sniff. Mmm. Mmm. So immediately what we're seeing actually is a lot more of a black fruit spectrum uh, than you, you would usually sort of see in the Southern Rhone. Because usually in the Southern Rhone, it's all about sort of brambles and red plums and sort of wild berry fruit flavors, sort of more on the red fruit spectrum. But uh, here, it's very much more sort of, well, it's sort of a cross between Rhone and Bordeaux as far as the nose is concerned. There's a lot more sort of chocolatey and sort of mocha sort of flavors, more sort of oaky flavors, and more sort of black cherry, a little bit of black currant. I mean, there is definitely a little bit of sort of red plum bit of bramble there as well but it's definitely a little bit more sort of black fruit uh, sort of spectrum 
And this would also have to do with the fact that his vines, or Domain Vire's vines, are very, very old. And so they're more concentrated. The, uh, well, the resulting grapes are more concentrated. And then, of course, the resulting wines, this one, becomes very concentrated as well. Very, very intense uh, aromatics. Anyway, let's give it a uh, give it a taste. It's certainly very, very um, intense. Mm. One thing I have to say, I'm just keeping on looking over at the um, bottle here because it always surprises me. But it does say 14.5%. And yet while I was tasting it, I was sort of going, hmm, that doesn't seem like 14.5%. Uh, usually when you're sort of drinking, a, well, because this is, a, as I say, a GSM, if you're dr drinking the same uh, blend, a GSM, a Grenache or a Syrah uh, from, or Shiraz from Australia, for instance, and it was 14.5%, then you definitely expect a bit of a kickback or be quite warm on the palate. But here it's actually very, very well balanced. And that actually just goes to show just how ripe the fruit is, because the, uh, the fruit is obviously sort of absorbing that alcohol a little bit, so it's not necessarily becoming abundantly obvious. It's not out of balance in any way. Um, and then there's a little bit of acidity here as well, which is sort of just to help to keep it um, sort of lively and exciting. Again, the same sort of flavors, but a little bit more in the red fruit spectrum here on the palate, which is quite interesting. Uh, so on the palate, definitely, I'm getting a lot of, um, or I was getting a lot of sort of red plum, very, very sort of juicy red cherry fruit flavors, a little bit of sort of cherry pie, cherry tart sort of flavor as well. And then you're starting, especially on the palate, uh, uh, the finish here, sorry, uh, then you are starting to get a lot more of those sort of Provencal herbs. Um, so a few of the sort of rosemary, a little bit of thyme, uh, there as well. But then there's this sort of lovely sort of vanilla note that sort of just trickles through the palate, which is lovely. Uh, just absolutely lovely. Again, a very complex, very interesting sort of wine. And it packs a lot into the bottle, because uh, this is only 35, I think, on our website. And that's pretty jolly cheap. Uh, for one of the leading producers in the natural wine movement, um, no sulfur is added either. So that's also something we should say. No sulfur is added either. But that being said, people tend to freak out about it um, when I say no sulfur, uh, because they're like, oh my gosh, well, that means I can't age it or anything like that. It's, it might go off in the bottle or anything else. And yes, of course, that is a risk. Uh, but I have to say, I've had many, many, many of his wines. The Renaissance, um, there's his Colonnade, he's got a few other cuvées as well, the Solstice, uh, and they all sort of vary in price from 20 to about $80 a bottle. And I've had them going on for five, six, seven years in my cellar, maybe even longer, eight years perhaps. Um, and they all age really, 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 really well because of the, he's got the natural tannins there and the natural uh, acidity, acidity there and the color and all the rest that all helps to actually create uh, a long lived structure and also helps to keep it sort of naturally um, oxidation proof, uh, basically. So you don't need the extra SO2, uh, extra sulfites uh, added in there as a preservative that is. Anyway, so please do uh, like away on the video. Uh, please comment, let us know if you've tried their wines, if you've uh, enjoyed their wines before. If you haven't, why haven't you? Uh, but if there's any other sort of natural wine producers that you're absolutely loving uh, at the moment, uh, then please do let us know. And please subscribe as well. That's much appreciated from everyone here on the team. A lot of hard work goes into making these videos. Uh, and also please share away with your other f uh, fine wine loving uh, sort of friends and family. Anyway. First and foremost, cheers.